Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art, and I create colorful, therapeutic animal art tutorials for daily creative quiet time. I am now on day 34 of my 365 days of color, and in today's video, I'll be sharing my color choices and my process for the Seahorse Commission. All right, guys, let's get started. So here are the dominant colors in this painting, and I've never used red light, and I hardly ever use ultramarine blue. I've only used that a few times before, and I really wanted to put these together in this painting. Now this is the second nautical painting of a four ocean painting commission that I'm working on. The first one was of the dolphin, which I'll include links to that time lapse down below. Now when I'm looking at my reference photo, trying to figure out what colors to choose, I first look at the darkest colors, and then I find the medium value colors, and then I think about the lighter value colors. This dominant color that's really dark in the reference photo, to me looks almost black, and anytime that happens, I will use either a dark blue or a dark purple. So in this case, I decided to go with my Prisma Violet. And then I see oranges in there as more of my medium value. And so that's where I use my red light and permanent red. And then I see little highlights of yellow and white. And so for that, I use cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, and white. Now I've painted about three seahorse paintings before this, and I've always struggled with these bumps because the exoskeleton is on the outside for a seahorse, unlike us, where we have it on the inside. So it's bumpy, it's hard, it's pointy. Figuring out the pattern of shadows and the lights was a challenge. I found working on one groove, one bump at a time, working from top down to the very end of the tail really helped me. And then the bumps on the far left would always be lighter than the bumps on the far right or in the middle. So I had my lighter yellows on those far left bumps and then as I moved horizontally to the right, that became more pinks, oranges, and reds. And then I knew that the tail would be extra dark, so I used tons of Prisma Violet there. And I even mixed a little bit of ultramarine blue into that tail because I have so much orange in the top part of the seahorse, plus the just the Prisma Violet wasn't actually dark enough. And I also used my ultramarine blue and prisma violet to create those little fins. There's one on the head as well as the back. Now the hardest part about this painting was the fourth row of small little bumps right below the back fin. It just kind of snuck up on me and I had a hard time trying to fit that in and understand the highlights and the shadows. So I eventually just moved on to that tail I found the easiest way to paint that tail just to make sure I keep all the bumps consistent and about the same size is to just use one color and not several. Just fill in the entire tail with Prisma Violet and my Ultramarine Blue, cover up all the white and make sure as I went down the tail those bumps actually did get smaller and then that's when I would add those subtle highlights and that's when I mixed in my my red light and my yellow ochre and some of my permanent red. Now I exaggerated the highlights on the tail. I actually made them brighter and more colorful. I added even some cadmium yellow to the very top of that end of the tail. And then that's when I go back to that frustrating part of the seahorse. I even pulled in some light purple thinking maybe that would complement the yellow and make things look less confusing. And that really didn't work that seemed to make things a little bit worse. So eventually I went in with Prisma Violet, just covered it all up and started over. So I left those two bumpy middle rows and just focused on those two back rows. And that seemed to help me a lot. And I still really liked that light purple that I was using before, so I added some more and that purple really pulled out the purples in the background as well. So once I finished the seahorse, I added about two more layers to my background. Because that tail is so dark, I kept that bottom area more light. I added a good amount of white to my fluorescent pink on the left side and more white to my gray purple on the right side. 
All right, creatives, so there you have it. That is how I painted the seahorse. I post my drawing, coloring, painting progress every single day on my blog, which I have linked down below, called the 365 Days of Color. Now, if you'd like to get all my real-time masterclass and YouTube tutorials, traceables, reference photos, and material lists, along with my business ebooks and guides, I have all that in my masterclass. Links to my class tiers are also down below. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. You can look for an abstract horse real-time tutorial coming next week to my YouTube channel. I'll see you then. Bye.